Avatar is 15 years old. 15 years later, it's still one of the most celebrated franchises of all time. This little show has captured the imagination and changed the lives of many people, including myself. So today, in remembrance, a myriad of other YouTubers, including myself, are doing this little collaboration. A tribute of sorts. Today, we're going to pretend we're the Avatar and give ourselves hypothetical masters that would accompany us on our hypothetical Avatar journey. So when you're done watching this, be sure to watch the other guy's videos. So for this video, it doesn't actually matter where you're born, fire, earth, water, air, but I did a personality quiz and I got earth, so let's go with that. I'm born in the Earth Kingdom and the White Lotus comes to get me because they find out I'm the Avatar. So who would I choose to be my fire, earth, water, and air master in this hypothetical scenario? I get to choose whoever I want within the entire franchise, so it transcends the boundaries of time. So I can choose anyone from Avatar 1 to the Korra timeline and it'll all just magically work perfectly. This being an actual Avatar journey, I need to prioritize all facets of life. So for this I need spiritual leaders, innovative benders, strong benders, and a good group chemistry. So with that being said, let's get into this. For the firebending master, I really wanted to put in Azula. She's a complete prodigy being the only character able to make blue flames in the whole series, but she's way too manipulative and cunning. Even Toph couldn't sense when she was lying. Also the only character in that tier. I don't know, maybe I'm just too caught up in the idea that I can make blue flames. Although she's probably a really bad teacher now that I think about it. In terms of chemistry, she's a freak show, and I don't think anyone on the team will really be able to know what she's thinking, and that's way too dangerous to have on my team. I really wanted to somehow justify putting her in, because everyone's choosing Iroh as a fire leader, so, I mean, let's stop delaying the inevitable. My firebending master will be Iroh. Iroh, for one, can be a spiritual guide. He can help me tap into the spiritual side of the Avatar. I also kind of contemplated putting Zuko in there, but I don't know, I feel like he gets angry too often. He's a great character of course, but I don't think I would actually like him in real life all that much. Comparing Iroh to Azula again, I don't know if Iroh has as much raw talent. I mean, that's debatable. Iroh and Azula seem to be somewhat comparable in strength. I mean, Iroh is old, he's like, I don't know, 60 or something, and Azula's like 14. So yeah, they're both not at their prime. So who knows, if they were both 30 or something, it might balance out. Iroh knows lightning redirection and generation, whereas Azula only knows generation. Iroh also knows the true origin of firebending, and that, of course, will be very helpful. Probably necessary, being the Avatar. Again, I didn't want to choose Iroh just because I knew everyone else would choose Iroh, but, I mean, he's the clear choice for this. For my earthbending master, I'm choosing Toph. Toph is much more wild to sort of contrast Iroh's calm, peaceful demeanor. She's also the greatest earthbender in the sense that her bending prowess is by far the best in the show. She can tell when people are lying, she has seismic sense, and of course she invented metal bending. There's a debate as to which is more useful between lava bending and metal bending. I will concede that in a raw fight, it's probably lava bending that's stronger than metal bending, but being the avatar, I'll have fire bending at my disposal, so I think that having fire bending and lava bending seems a bit superfluous. Besides, a fully realized avatar can lava bend anyways. In terms of personality, Toph is one who really stands her ground and I feel like, personally, I'm one who kind of just lets things go and takes things for how they are and Toph will teach me to stand my ground and, you know, be more authoritative, which I think is important for the avatar. For my airbending master, I'm choosing Aang. For this, of course, we're gonna pretend Aang isn't the avatar and that he's just an airbender, which I'm sure he's fine with. Aang is similar to Toph. He's a revolutionary airbender who uses airbending for things like running faster, using an air scooter, and all sorts of things. Everyone likes to say Guru Lahima is the most revolutionary airbender, and I would probably agree, but I think Aang is by far the most creative one. Let's be real here, Guru Lahima was probably crazy too, just listen to the things that hear quotes. Theoretically, if I were to unlock the avatar state by opening up all my chakras, I could fly anyways. Not just because the Avatar state literally lets you fly, but letting go of your earthly tether as Zaheer puts it, and opening up your chakras seems kind of similar to me, I don't know. This is just theoretical of course, there's no evidence to back me up on this, but I'm just saying theoretically, you know, I should be able to actually fly if I master the Avatar state by opening up my seven chakras. If it wasn't obvious before, we're gonna be taking Kid Aang, not the old grumpy strict one from Korra. The only problem is I feel like at this age, he wouldn't really want to teach me airbending, he would probably just be more interested in 
playing airball or something which might be what i need to be honest to bring balance to Toph's hardcore training she'll put me through but yeah that is a potential weakness in my crew for water this might come as a surprise to some of you but i'm gonna be taking unalak first of all i think it's important to get different perspectives with Toph being able to check when people are lying and with iroh probably being extremely suspicious anyways i think i should be covered for the most part He's one of the better waterbenders in the series, and really brings a new perspective which can teach me about balance. Now, I'm not a big fan of the whole negative dark avatar thing like I would imagine a lot of people aren't, so we'll also pretend that doesn't exist in this reality and that he's just a good guy. <laughs> I'm kidding. But even if I wasn't, he did teach Korra about spirit bending, right? There's no doubt that would be really useful for me. Korra even did take some advice from Unalak in the end, so it's not like he's all bad. Unalak can't bloodbend, but I don't think I'm going to be running into any of those guys anytime soon anyways. If I am, then I'll just avatar state, or I guess if I lose my bending to Amon, I could uh, ask Aang to give it back to me. This is all to say that I don't really prioritize blood bending, and I think that healing is a much more practical and important ability. And well, Unalak does have healing abilities. Being really in tune with the spirits and such, him and Ira would have no problem getting me into the spirit world and generally teaching me the whole spiritual side of being the avatar. He seems like he would also be a really good teacher, like again he was able to teach Korra about spirit bending, which I'm sure would translate into being a good waterbender too. He was never one to make big waterfalls or anything, but his bending always struck me as precise and intricate. This could also translate into other styles of bending like metal bending. As you may know, metal bending is actually bending the fine gradients in unpurified metals. If Unalak teaches me how to be precise with water bending, it's safe to assume that this sort of principle could be applied to earth bending too and give me an easier time learning how to metal bend. I'm getting into like super headcanon territory, but his water bending could potentially transfer into fire bending and give me blue flames. If you don't know, Part of the reason Azula has blue flames is because her fire is so extremely concentrated. She uses her fingertips instead of her fists when bending and that's likely what helps her flames turn blue. If I can transfer Udenlok's water bending style into fire bending, I could potentially bend blue flames. So yeah, with that being said, I have the strongest avatar team. I think with this, I would already be the most strong and spiritually in tune bender. But just to add insult to injury to all the other YouTubers that may think their team is the best, my non-bending partner on my team would be Ty Lee. Ty Lee is loyal, kind, and can teach me acrobatics and chi blocking. On top of my absurd bending prowess, I would have insane acrobatics. With airbending, I could even complement my acrobatics. After this, I will be completely unstoppable and the ultimate avatar. Shoutouts to Antoine for getting this all set up for us to participate. This was a really interesting concept and a fun video to make. Again, don't forget to check out all the other creators as they've all done some really awesome work. Let me know what your team avatar would be. If you're new here and you potentially came from other people's videos, check out my other avatar content. You won't be disappointed. I have a video specifically on bending talking about why the avatar must learn all the different bending disciplines. Not only physically, but culturally, metaphorically, etc. It's pretty related to this video actually, check it out. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.